Scanning for audio. Welcome once again to a Tin Dog Podcast. Ah yes, in my desperate attempt to catch up, I've been reviewing DVDs left, right and centre. There will be more Big Finish very soon. Bear with me. Please don't stop bearing with me. This time and next time I'll be talking about the Ace Boxed set. But as always, I will insist on reviewing one story per show. It's a little foible of mine, and as it's my show, get your hands off it, it's mine. I'll do whatever I want. So today... I talk about Dragonfire, and next time, hear the Happiness Patrol. So onwards, onwards, dear, dear, dear friends, to Dragonfire. If I were you lot, I'd go for your tea break now. What's in those cans? Nitro 9, last one back to gooey mess. Everybody, get down! for a quick adventure, then back for tea. Ace, and we're really going to go looking for dragons? How old are you? Eighteen. No home to call your own. The twelve galaxies are your home. Hello. I'm not interrupting anything, am I? What are you doing here? That's a very difficult question. Why is everyone around here so preoccupied with metaphysics? I think she's going to kill us, Doctor. Ah, an existentialist. I want you to spread terror throughout ice Did you hear that? Hear what? It's coming towards us. It's all around us. Look out! Stop it! Whoa! Lost. After 3,000 years, the dragon fire shall be mine. There is absolutely no secret at all that I don't like Mel. I am as predictable as ever that I dislike Mel. Not Bonnie Langford. My own issues with Bonnie Langford are my own when I'll cover it elsewhere. No. Mel was never truly destined to be a great companion. Yes, you can use the word stunt casting, but if you've heard her on Big Finish, she's more than acceptably good as an actress. She was underused. She didn't truly understand the role. At least that's what I like to tell myself. She didn't really get it. And that's fine. You can't expect everyone to be an instant Doctor Who fan. She was very, very old school. Ace, however was not. She has her detractors. She's not perfect. She's not exactly a great example of a 16-year-old back in 1987. But in 1987, I was 15. I didn't care. Mel was going. I had a doctor I could seriously relate to, and somebody else was arriving. Dragonfire does contain Mel's greatest ever scene, her leaving scene, and not just because she leaves. You see, I sound bitter and twisted and I really need to let this go. It's just I don't like Mel. I don't mind her in the big finishes. They're awfully well acted. They're awfully well written. Awfully, awfully well written. The Juggernaut is a great story. Definitely worth playing to. I just didn't like her in the series. She was completely the wrong companion for me at that time. I could not let her baggage from other performances go. I'm not that big a man. And to be fair, I wasn't even a man then at all. So I was glad she was going. That is a tick in the box of how good Dragonfire was before I even got a chance to watch it. Weirdly, I did know from some way that Mel was going. Was it on Blue Peter? Was it in a magazine somewhere? Had it just been hinted at? Or was there an interview? I just don't know and can probably never remember. So yes, instantly, in its tiggy box, you have two positives. Ace, a new companion who didn't scream. Oh, that was good. Mel was going. Another good thing. So what about the story itself? What else do we have? Well, another thing. Sablom Glitz. One of the great redeeming features 
a Robert Hill Museum double act, I'll grant you that one. But more importantly, Tony Selby could really pull it off. Why is this guy not got his own spin-off series on Big Finish? How can we not have him and Mel on board the Nosferatu 2, 3, whatever, that space station travelling through space. It would be great. It would be Jago and Lightfoot for an 80s generation. Trust me, we actually would want, trust me, we really would want to listen. It's got Patricia Quinn. It's got one of the nicest scenes ever where the Doctor chats to a guard. So what's the problem with Dragonfire? Well, apart from being overlit and the monster not being played by the person the costume was made for, hence the reason it has saggy stockings. Are we back to something from the demons again? Very probably. It is as close as Doctor Who ever, ever gets to aliens. That's the film rather than just having aliens in it, because let's face it, it's got those most of the time. The problem with it is kind of the budget, but the production values. Kane's base is great. It looks sumptuous. Even the Star Wars cantina done on a BBC budget isn't as bad as everyone makes out. Susan Moore's puppets are brilliant. I've got a lot of time for them and her costume design. I'm sure I met her at a convention when I was very, very young. I think I showed myself up. She'd worked on Terrorhawks building Zelda, I think. Why am I getting things mixed up? Oh, I do have to have a Peter Wag tribute episode of the Tin Dog Podcast. This man meant so much to me growing up. As an effect, he was spot on, but that's not important right now. What is important is that this story worked. At the time, it meant a lot to me. It was brilliant. Now, I know looking back, I still wear my rose-tinted glasses. It's not perfect. It does, it does leave you feeling less than fulfilled, much more so now than it did at the time. That's not really a bad thing, is it? There's not really a bad performance anywhere. Sophie hits the ground running, and let's face it, she's pretty damn good. So what else do you get on the extras? Well, as you would expect, there's a making-of documentary, and there's some very, very nice commentaries. And, as usual, the extras mainly consist of making-ofs and a few little snippets of Sophie appearing on other programmes. And so I'll fade away now and come back very shortly, probably in the next day or so, to discuss... Well, the Happiness Patrol. I'm such an old-school reactionary fan. Everybody else has totally reevaluated that story and come to new conclusions and exciting ways forward. I so haven't. Be seeing you. You have been listening to the Tin Dog Podcast. Doctor Who and its associated shows are all trademark of the BBC. No infringement is intended. Contact us at tin-dog at hotmail.co.uk. Dog.